Roguelikes. For me, this genre is actually the definition of, well, the games that you can actually for play for really, really, really long time and have a lot of fun doing that. But what happens when roguelike actually combines itself with some other genres? I guess sometimes it creates a perfection. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Slay the Spire and whether it is worth it to buy right now or not. And as always, for the ones who already know what this game is and who wants to get the answer right away, Here's the answer. Slay the Spire is absolutely worth it and this is one of the games that you must have in your library no matter where you're playing it. But let's get into the details. So what is Slay the Spire? So Slay the Spire is a roguelike. Your goal is basically to go through a different set of levels to get as far as possible before you'll die in order to start all over again with all the additional equipment and all the additional experience and knowledge that you got from your first run and where each and every time the levels are actually different. Not unlike the Hades that we discussed in one of the previous videos. But this time Slay the Spire has a twist. It's actually a card collection based type of game. Basically that means that you're not actually battling your enemies in real time or not even in turn base, you are actually combating them with the cards. Well, it actually is a turn base, but you're actually using a card in order to do so. Well, it's actually kind of a mix of Hades and the Hearthstone. So when you start a game, you need to, well, ascend a spire. You're choosing one of the four characters in, in the beginning of which you can only use only one. And you basically start the game. And when you start the game, you have only very basic deck of cards. With every turn, you are given a certain set of cards, which has a different effects, ranging from the attacking, blocking, adding additional cards, applying additional effects, healing yourself, doing AoE, or crown controlling, or a bunch of other things. If you have a limited amount of energy, each card will cost a certain amount of energy, and when you exhaust these cards, then the opponent will have its turn, then you will have your turn, etc, etc, until one of you will die. And if and when you will win, you will progress to the second you will progress to a different level. And sometimes you have a choice between different levels. You can either go and combat other enemies, you can go and combat the boss if you have boss there. You can go to a mystery level, and mystery level can have a different variety. There can be enemies, there can be a boss, or they can be a certain choice that you have to make in order to achieve additional effects. Or they can be a campfire where you can rest or upgrade your cards or there can be a store where you can buy additional cards or additional relics or additional potions that you can use during the game. I told a lot of things right here, but it's actually very, very simple game to understand, yet very complex to actually master. So if you sit down and start playing this game, you will get the hang of it within the first three minutes of the game. It's that simple to understand. And because you really don't need a Twitch reflexes and be really fast, because you're playing with the cards, you will be able to get really far very soon, giving you the sense of power as soon as you start the game. However, you'll quickly realize as you go to the later acts that you are actually not that powerful. And when you start your game again, you will actually need to upgrade your abilities, you upgrade your cards in order to get a bit further. Each and every character has their own specific deck of cards because they're using different weapons and different abilities. For example, one character is mainly using a sword while another character is using a poison daggers while another can be a mage type of character. And each and every one of them has their own set of cards. At the end of every level you gather your loot, it can be a gold, it can be additional cards or it can be additional relics which gives you additional effects. And you progress through the spire just like that. And this game is actually genius, genius in its simplicity. You don't need any complex storyline or things like that. It's just a pure game where you can just sit down, start the run, play for a few minutes or a few hours if you just get sucked in into the game and finish your run or die or just quit the run and then continue your run later. That's just what it is and it's insanely fun. And it's just very, and it's an insanely good game. But what makes this game very fun is that it's universal availability. The game is actually available on practically every platform that you can imagine. PC, consoles, and even on mobile. Yes, you can play the Slay the Spire on iOS, on your iPhone, or on your iPad. Which makes this game perfect for that. But let's discuss the pricing right now. The game is available on Steam for the base price of $24.99 for tier 1 countries and $12.49 for tier 2 countries 
and it can go as low as $9.99 for tier 1 countries and $4.99 for tier 2 countries. The game is also available on mobile and for me it, the price was $11.99. It's also available on consoles and it is also on a Game Pass and that's exactly how I played this game. So is it actually worth it? So let's discuss everything bit by bit. If you have played roguelikes and you enjoy this genre, this game is absolutely worth it even for the full price. You're gonna get a lot, a lot, a lot of enjoyment from this game and you're gonna have very, very long sessions in this game and you will potentially get much more game time than 25 hours. For me, even the very first run took me more than hour to do. So I'm pretty sure that getting 25 hours from this game is just easy. So trust me when I say that getting 25 hours from this game is pretty easy. And this game is especially worth it if you are buying this on a sale. The game is also very worth it on mobile because yeah, this is one of few good mobile games that you can actually play and enjoy. So it's actually absolutely worth it to do so. And especially it is worth it if you have a game pass already, no matter whether it's on Xbox or on PC you should get this game in play and play it. But like Guardians of the Galaxy, is this game worth it to get a Game Pass for? And my answer will be, well, rather not. Guardians of the Galaxy was a $30 game. This is a $10 game on a sale, and with $10, this game will be forever with you. While with the Game Pass, the game will be with you only for a single month. So yeah, this game is actually very good, but it's not worth to get a Game Pass for, just because you can get this game cheaper than on a Game Pass. Unless you already have a Game Pass for other games, then it's 100% very worth it. Plus, the game is pretty small, and if you have a console like like Series S, which, which does not have a huge space, will not have a huge space on your console, so you can just simply install it and play it whatever you want. So my overall verdict is this. Game is insanely fun, insanely addicting, and very, very, very cool experience you have. And and it's and because it's not very fast paced it's actually a very relaxing experience unlike Hades where experience is very 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 high adrenaline and very high stakes here it's well much slower much more methodical and it is much more relaxing for that matter so if you want a relaxing roguelike well this game is that so yeah I 100% recommend this latest part especially I recommend this game for the people who are getting into the roguelike genre you're gonna enjoy this game a lot. Well, this is it for today. Thank you for being here with me. What other roguelike games have you played and which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you like this. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And I'm gonna see you in the next one. See ya.